Dogecoin to the moon. What's up, YouTube community, and welcome to Invest Desk, your number one channel for investing in cryptocurrency with daily updates, news, and forecasts. My name, of course, is Syed, and today it's Sunday afternoon. Um, awesome day, and uh, some some good news, some breaking news. But before I talk about the news, uh, let me set the agenda. So the topic today that I'm going to talk about, and this is uh, um, a fascinating topic. And it's really nice because the topic today is, let me get this right away, is talking about the inflationary design of Dogecoin versus, um, you know, deflationary designs, all right, of other coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other altcoins. So we're going to take a look at why uh, Dogecoin is actually, you know, inflationary in nature. So we'll, we'll compare the two, why cryptocurrencies are inflation, why... Um, you know, there's there's billions and billions of coins circulating in Dogecoin. There's no cap, but in Bitcoin, there's a cap. Therefore, demand and supply, right? So that kind of concept we'll talk about. So you probably know all of this already. So yeah, so share in the comments, post the comments if you know um, any of this. But this is interesting because I'm going to be covering a lot of these specific details of Dogecoin and the way it's designed. Okay, and then we'll also talk about long run, and of course, we'll uh, blend in the latest news. For example, the one that you see right here, um, you know, Apple Magazine says Dogecoin, the new Bitcoin is happening right now. Remember our stream a couple of days ago? We talked about this, right? This was about three days ago when I did the stream and I said, Is Dogecoin the next Bitcoin or even better? Right? So go check that out, guys. I talked about this already. This is fascinating. Um, so, Apple Magazine yesterday just wrote an article. I'm going to share the article too and take a look at it. Um, if you've not taken a look at it, but you can do so. But uh, welcome, welcome again um, to the channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button, and of course comment because that's the best way um, we can say it. We can move forward. So I'm going to talk about the agenda once again to lay it out is. You know the inflationary design of Dogecoin and why uh, it actually matters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and first check my settings here for the actual comments here. So just give me a second. All right, great. All right, so. Um, yesterday's stream was pretty nice. We did a recap, by the way, uh, for the past week, uh, and that was super exciting. That was great. And today we're going to take a look at the performance of a Dogecoin, by the way. It was at a dip, right, guys? So let me first quick share the actual chart before we uh, move forward before I talk about the, the actual design and how Dogecoin is positioned to be um, in, a, in a good way because inflation as per economists, right, it's, it's a good thing, okay? Um, I don't know, you know, the prices increase, but we'll, we'll talk about this. But before I actually do, let's first quickly take a look at the price chart because it uh, seems like it's going up. So let me bring that up quick. There we go. Awesome. There you go, it's right here. So, Dogecoin took a dip all the way up to 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.42, right? Something like that. And guess what, guys? You guessed it right. Yes, I bought it. All right. So, yeah, I did. Sorry, but <laughs> I did buy it, right? That's the dip we've been waiting for. And that's exactly um, what we're after, right? We're after these dips. So, it just went back up to 0.047, 0.048. And that's that's pretty neat okay because it was at 0.05 for the entire week um, kind of going sideways right no ups and downs too much the average stabilization uh, stabilization price was about 0.05 0 0.055 right it's that range and um, just in fact a few hours ago right it was about three or four hours ago it took a dip so let me make it bigger so you can actually see there we go Okay, so this is uh, this is this is really nice because now you see that the 
dips and then of course it goes up right that's the pattern i'm going to talk about this analysis a little bit more um when we do talk about the price the, you know the inflationary design although it may not be directly related to you know of course the price charts but in the long run once you um once we talk about it once you take a look at it why uh, dogecoin was actually created to be an inflationary design coin as opposed to all of the rest of the cryptocurrency pretty much that is deflationary so we'll talk about that just just uh, bear with me here for for a moment because right now we're taking a look at the actual uh, price of dogecoin which is at about 0.0 um, 4 7 right 0.048 and it's kind of going up the trend is upwards all right so if you bought it at 0.04 one three four hours ago put it in the comment okay let me in fact write it down the question Did you buy Dogecoin at the dip, right? So um, let me know if you did or not. But um, this is pretty, um, sort of like, you know, it went down and just went up, okay? And it still continued to go up. So let's see where it kind of, you know, stabilizes, maybe back to 0 0.05, 0 0.055, or even, even higher, depends on what it is because now, of course today is sunday right so we did a full recap of last week of how the you know dogecoin performed and of course next week is super exciting several new uh, developments um, have occurred and there are others in the pipeline as we move forward this is by the way daily guys so i also showed the excel spreadsheet when we talked about um, when we did the stream yesterday so and and this is super exciting because as we move forward we are keeping track of um, our portfolio and how we're doing so of course uh, next week we'll also do another recap and then we'll compare the two excel documents together or two excel spreadsheets so we understand the averages of what's going on but this is where dogecoin is uh, right now all right so let's talk about briefly i'm not going to uh, do this a long stream i'm just going to keep it short today because it's sunday right uh, so we'll talk up talk about i'm going to talk about the the deflation and inflation right what that is and what does that mean in terms of cryptocurrency so deflation think about this okay De deflation is essentially or or before i talk about deflation let's let's talk about inflation okay inflation occurs basically when price of goods and services rise just simple as that okay let's keep it simple so when these prices rise inflation occurs of goods and services whereas deflation is just just the opposite when those prices go down or decrease that's called deflation kind of makes sense right so the balance between these two economic conditions inflation and deflation basically you know the opposite side so you know one is inflation the other one's deflation right so the balance between these two conditions of the same coin right whether it's um, whatever coin it is is delicate and an economy can quickly swing from one condition to the other okay so just keep that in mind for now just the de basic definition once we move forward then we'll know exactly what's going on okay so most altcoins for example um bitcoin for example is a popular one the top of the uh, top of the game is designed you know to be deflationary okay okay which means that there's a hard cap number of bitcoins and bitcoin really um works is which which basically means that the cap means we talked about the market capitalization yesterday also right Twenty forty, right? Twenty forty, you're not gonna have come into the supply line, right? And altcoins like Litecoin, for example, they have similar setups. Okay, 
So now you know that in about 10, 20 years, right? All of those Bitcoins would, would have been mined and now you'll have just the ones that you can play with. Okay, there'll be no more. Now, that's one of the main reasons. I'm going to talk about this later on too, but this is the main reason why Bitcoin is actually of Bitcoin are going up because of this particular scenario, right? Demand and so designed as a deflation so that there's only really limited supply. And if that's the case, of course, price is going to go, you know, of course, and down on the supply and demand, so to speak. Okay, that kind of makes sense. So so that's that's really what Bitcoin is. But Dogecoin, on the other hand, okay, and I want you to keep that in mind. So Bitcoin, of course, you know, I've already covered this in the previous. Go check those out. Tail. Twenty-eight billion. This month to eighteen million, like that the largest communities in the crypto space uh, you know dog logo and all this you know it was a joke started we, we've covered this right so these are some interesting once again just a quick recap but let's take a look at the design of dogecoin how you know the developers the founders thought about it um, because essentially the, they were thinking that this coin should be inflationary right sort of like people's currency people's crypto so the design two aspects first one which i already earlier streams but go check that out uh, about dogecoin mining in depth but one aspect is mining and the other aspect is supply right so mining dogecoins um we'll talk about this first we'll talk about supply and we'll see why um, it's not you know fluctuating as Bitcoin and, and what's going on. So the reason behind this, right? This is important to know because if you are whether you're holding to whether you're pumping and dumping, whatever it is that you're doing as day trader, or important to um, kind of know. Um, and again, that increases your knowledge, by the way. And I'm a financial advisor, uh, say so please don't hold me accountable for your own decisions. Um, I'm just here to share my research and strategies. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, guys, and All right, so we'll talk about of Dogecoin and um, you know, it's, it's inflationary by buys. Look at the proof of work algorithm. Okay, so Dogecoin's block like any other primary blockchain, and blocks are chained together. And we already know this probably. You hashing algorithm and outputs can be spent so in other words users can spend their by sending respective addresses on the other hand validate and that, that's how they get paid it's by doing all the hard labor work while on the computer computers are doing all the hard work so any valid trans um, uh, transactions rather will be rejected of transactions are added to the blocks which are further added to the blockchain okay so additionally on top of that dogecoin also uses the proof of work the pow right that's that's what they call the pow algorithm that bitcoin also uses right so it capitalizes on on putting in work and any modern computer can actually calculate their hash there's nothing difficult about it. Just gotta, you know, put together all these bunch of computers and start mining. That's what it's called. So the generated hash must match a specific pattern according to, you know, the mathematical difficulty property. In other words, the higher the difficulty, the fewer matches of hashes are possible. So what that results in is just takes longer to generate a hash that matches this particular difficulty, okay? 
So on average, Bitcoin, by the way, mines a new block every 10 minutes, where it's Dogecoin uh, on a Dogecoin network, miners generate a new block every minute on average. So that, that's a big key point. You want to keep that in mind when we actually talk about inflation and deflation of um, cryptocurrencies. Okay. So you understand the mining concept, right? Perfect. Um, so let's see, before I talk about the uh, supply or the inflationary design. All right. So let's go back. Just give me a second here. Perfect. All right, so let's talk about the inflation, okay, of the supply aspect of Dogecoin. And that's kind of where we talk about Dogecoin could actually turn into a usable currency, by the way, okay? And that's the real, real power behind Dogecoin, and that's what's going on. So, what Dogecoin can potentially do is actually can become real currency, like people's cryptocurrency. And it could do that for one simple reason. And the reason is that it's designed to increase its supply at a set absolute rate. Again, right? It's just in inflationary. It's just going to keep supplying, keep supplying these coins. And of course, if there's more supply and less demand, the prices are going to be low. That kind of makes sense, right? That's what we talked about, inflation, right? And deflation. So it's designed to increase its supply at a fixed rate. And this kind of guarantees that for a long time, the supply will increase at a fairly steady rate. So what that means is that the supply is considered inflationary, not deflationary, right? Like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is deflationary. It's fixed. So for example, there are about 128 billion Dogecoin in circulation, right? That That's somewhere around there, 128 billion. And the rate of increase um, in the number of Dogecoins once mined is no more than 5 billion Dogecoins per year. That's the rate. Now, on the other hand, we talked about this, implements a hard cap, like a ceiling, right? On the total number of Bitcoins that a node operator can mine. And that's set to at about 21 million Bitcoins. And that's really to this day at about 19 million Bitcoins have been mined. Nobody would be able to mine more Bitcoins, right? From this point on, the miners will only receive uh, income, right? Or, or their income based on transaction fees for matching or finding or matching a hash or an address, right? No more income for them for mining Bitcoins because it's a hard cap. So Dogecoin, of course, takes a different approach to its economic design. The coin has chosen for an inflationary design. Now, this choice or what this means is that Dogecoin enjoys an infinite supply, pretty much, right? So like I mentioned earlier, right? Basically, you get a reward of about 10,000 Doge um, every time you mine, right? A particular block, right? You get 10,000 Doge. So, what that means is at that rate, um, you know, you can imagine the Doge coins being mined daily and the rewards every minute. Okay, so that's a huge amount of supply. Um, and Dogecoin has opted for, you know, it was created to be inflationary to replace lost coins. And we see, you know, people talking about how you lose your wallet, right? So, for example, if you have coins and you lose your wallet, well, you cannot, there's no username and password, you have nothing. There's no way you can go to a bank, right? Because there's no bank in crypto world. You just lost it. So those coins are just lost. So it's, you know, Dogecoin is designed to replace those lost coins. Okay. So there's a lot of discussion about inflationary design of Dogecoin versus deflationary designs of Bitcoin. But it's important to note that the growth of money supply does not necessarily lead to inflation. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about that in which circumstances inflation is even better sometimes, right? So inflationary supply rather than deflationary. 
So we talked about Bitcoin, right? As well as many other alt currencies, by the way. I'm, I'm focusing on Bitcoin as an example, but other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Litecoin, they're also deflationary, just like Bitcoin is, okay? Fixed cap. So Dogecoin does the opposite, which allows an increasing supply at a steady absolute number each year. So as I mentioned earlier, by 2040, right? There'll be no more Bitcoins able to be mined. Well, that's still a ways, right? Still a ways, about 18, 20 years, right? Ahead. But guess what? Think long-term, guys. Think long-term, right? So if that's the case, this will encourage excessive hoarding of the supply of Bitcoins. This will push the Bitcoin price up, right? But reduce the actual trading volume of Bitcoins. In essence, what that means is deflating the float available, right? So come to the other side, right? By allowing 5 billion Dogecoins per year to increase the supply of Dogecoins for infinity, the supply will continue to grow, but eventually reach, of course, a practical limit. And what this allows us to do is calculate, you know, the inflation rate of the currency over time. And the real difference between Dogecoin and Bitcoin, by the way, is that inflationary supply than deflation supply and this is in simple terms think about this every year dogecoin allows 5 billion doge coins to be mined and this lasts forever whereas bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies they have a declining supply right so given this scenario the rate of inflation or rate of supply rather kind of slowly tends to drift down right it reaches a limit and if you guys are, you know, a math background or a calculus background, uh, that kind of translates into, in, in plain language, a 5% a year or about 175 years, right? It reaches a limit in about 170 years. That's theoretically speaking, if you were to uh, calculate or do the math behind it. But from a practical uh, standpoint the so supply will tend to grow from about three to four percent or even five percent annually over the next decade okay so the key point here the key takeaway remember price is always a function of demand and supply right so if you guys are economic students if not well now you know okay that's great that's the idea so it's always uh, you know price is always a function of demand and supply so as more and more people demand the currency right for transaction purposes with limited supply the price is going to go up and that's what's happening to bitcoin okay on the other hand dogecoin is just the opposite it's just you know too much too many coins out there right that's why the price is stable right it's kind of keeping low well we'll talk about that we'll see how dogecoin goes to the moon and how the price is going to go up that's coming up next right so make sure you stay focused and and hit the subscribe button guys I appreciate your help of course, I uh, hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I, um, you know, stream uh, one of these uh, fascinating topics. So we not only learn more about Dogecoin itself, but we're also growing as a community. So I appreciate your support. Um, so um, and I, of course, thank you for that. So we talked about uh, remember that price is always a function of demand and supply. More people demanding the currency. For transaction purposes, of course, with limited growth, the price is going to go up. And for all purposes, by the way, intents and purposes, this major reason that Bitcoin rises is due to people buying and hoarding the supply. That's the reason why Bitcoin prices are going up, right? And they know, people know that there's limited supply. So it's, it's just demand and supply. That's all there is to it. Apart from, of course, Bitcoin being accepted and you know all these other underlying and you know, all things being equal right as they say in economics which means that the currency you know bitcoin although it will rise in value will have little utility as a common means of payment and this is pretty important so bitcoin is very very expensive as 47000 uh, let's see where bitcoin is at right now is it 43 it was 47 yesterday by the way so it's just 43 right now okay so what that means is that once let me get that out of the way quick here there we go 
So that's the reason why Bitcoin is you know going up in value. But there's little utility as common means of payment. But Dogecoin supply is likely to rise consistently at a steady rate. Why? Right? Use Dogecoin to pay for goods and services. Even though it's an inflationary design, right? It's not going to you know, go crazy tomorrow. The idea is that inflation is actually a good thing. It can be a good thing because economists um, talk about and they argue that given this decision, Dogecoin must just have a better chance of being used as and transacted in the long term. This is going to be the people's currency. In other words, that's what Elon Musk has been talking about. And, you know, we all have been talking about as a community, right? Because if it's a good thing in the long run, right, and better chance of being used in transactions because of its value being relatively low as compared to Bitcoin, right? For example, if you were to buy a pizza, you buy shopping, you pay your bills or whatever it is that you want to do, you can easily do this with Dogecoin. And this is exactly what is happening, by the way, right? We talked about this the entire last week, so you can go check out those streams. So... Now we know that Dogecoin could be a good thing moving forward, right? But of course, in the long term, and that's exactly what we've been talking about also. So as long as, you know, it's at a steady and predictable rate, you would want the inflation rate to more or less match, of course, the global growth of the global economy, right? So this, you know, Dogecoin has to kind of match the way global economy is moving. Okay. For example, um, a, a finance professor at Georgetown University, um, he said, in order for a currency to survive, it's got to be useful. Okay. So there must be some use cases of Dogecoin. There must be certain types of uses that you, you can attach to the currency for it to survive. Okay. And one of the problems that, you know, we know that gold standard was that it's too inflexible, right? It takes too long for gold miners to dig it up of the ground, okay? So having a nice, steady, predictable money supply is actually a good thing. On the opposite end, of course, experts dismiss the entire altcoin concepts at its core. So there are, of course, those schools of thoughts also out there, right? Just outrightly rejecting all these cryptocurrencies. But I feel personally, of course, and many of you may also feel that this is definitely the future and it's solid. So we talk about the inflation, how it's a positive thing for Dogecoin in the long run, right? So although many of these coins, these newer coins coming up, right? They are an improvement over Bitcoin because Bitcoin has been around for many years, right? But Bitcoin, and they all kind of don't take into consideration the human behavior, right? Not math mathematical equations, drive markets, until human behaviors can actually be modeled and understood. And that's exactly what meme coins are. That's that's the real power of people, okay, coming in. Because there's, on one side, there's economics, right? And the other, you know, the other side, of course, the people's behavior. And people behave in different ways right we know that okay uh, GameStop has proven that AMC has proven that right it's just crazy all right so next let's talk about the the usage of Dogecoin as a currency how how is it gonna you know work what's possible we're gonna talk about that but let me see um, if you've joined welcome make sure you uh, click on the subscribe button guys and appreciate your support and uh, get those comments in and of course, hit the bell notification so you get notified every single time. Okay. All right. So we'll talk about usage as a currency. You know, Dogecoin, of course. So for all practical purposes, okay, the growth of Dogecoin is predictable, which means that, of course, it can more easily be used as an actual currency for simply buying and selling. If you want to buy you know, goods and services, you can use Dogecoin for all practical purposes. And we talked about that. Since people will not be hoarding the supply of Dogecoin, it's not like Bitcoin, right? Where you know the prices goes up, there's limited supply. 
right? And then it's easier to for the prices to fluctuate, you know, up and down quite frequently. So Dogecoin, since that's not going to happen with Dogecoin, it will tend to have more practical usage in the economy, right? So that's why we say Dogecoin to the moon. Basically, it's just you know going up to ten cents to a dollar, or even higher to five, seven, and so on, right? And but that's going to take some time. It's a long-term strategy based on its design okay so the annual supply will also increase and tell, tend to mimic growth of the global economies because this dogecoin uh, if it attaches itself with the global economy growth that's exactly in a perfect position that places dogecoin in a perfect position okay so for example if the annual gain um, in let's say of the global economy is 20 in 2025 right five years from now four years from now three years from now it will be about you know four percent or so that might be a bit high compared to the world growth by then right but in 2030 for example the annual gain in the dogecoin supply will be about three percent this may be close to the average annual gain in the global economy so it kind of makes sense okay so this basically hand in hand of global growth by the Dogecoin supply will also tend to provide sufficient liquidity and erase all these efforts of, you know, of course, hoarding the supply, right? And this is the main reason why Bitcoin has been rising is because of this scenario, okay? So I hope that kind of makes sense, right? But now it has a realistic chance of becoming a usable currency instead of some bizarre speculative asset and you know for early adopters and hoarders and just kind of wait and the price goes up and so on right so dogecoin is is different right it's just the opposite it's inflationary you know versus deflationary by design right so and that's the reason um basically why it's a win for dogecoin right and it's a win for basic economics right and of course i'm holding my dogecoin right and i'm just buying at a lower price okay it's still fairly low and it was down at 0.42 right and i bought some more so let me know if you bought it for yourself or not or did you miss uh, the actual uh, price because right now let's see where it's at it's at 0.0476 so it's kind of back up it's pushing itself back up okay all right so and of course what to do with Dogecoin, right? Once you have it. So we know that Dogecoin kind of started as a joke between two programmers, right? Uh, but of course it's designed in such a way to allow itself to be used as real currency with steady state supply growth characteristics, right? So we understand and we know the solid reasons of why Dogecoin inflation design could be a good thing in the long run as it kind of attaches itself to global growth of the economy. And of course, all the rest of the factors that we've been talking all last week, right? Where um, the government's trying to regulate the crypto world or they're trying to think about regulating it, right? Um, even talking about coming up with a digital dollar, that's one of the news. I'm gonna share some news too, um, you know, just, just shortly here once we're done with this. So what do you wanna do with Dogecoin, right? So investors who are sort of like inclined to buy cryptocurrency you cannot ignore, by the way, this this currency, right? For simple reason that it's different from almost all the rest of the pack, all right? And that's the reason why Elon Musk, in my opinion, is backing this currency, because Elon Musk is different, right? He's an alien, right? Quote unquote. That's what um, you know. In in the, in the articles you see, though, you read those, right? So, Elon Musk is different. So is Dogecoin, and. Um, literally by the way i think one of the rockets that that elon just launched or i was just reading the news i'm gonna share that too see if i can find it um he put dogecoin on, as a label on that literally right on that rocket so um he's definitely looking into this right so for this simple reason that dogecoin is different from the rest of the crypto world rest of the cryptocurrencies it's inflationary rather than deflationary supply trades give it a leg up right so to speak, in the cryptocurrency world. So why should you buy Dogecoin, right? It's likely to become the currency to buy things rather than, you know, being a speculative asset, okay? So it's going to be an actual currency spread all across the globe where people are going to use it just like we use, you know, our dollar and cents and whatnot, right? Your currency 
that you currently use. Because we know that the um, the total cryptocurrency users, by the way, across the globe, they're about you know a little over 100 million. Comes yourself, so and this you know number of users are growing you know exponentially, and of course as they grow um, and they have an option to use an alternative currency as opposed to dollar or your local fiat currency, Dogecoin is the perfect currency position because of its inflationary design this is very important guys in the long run right so if you know go talk to an, an economist or or you know check it out this is uh not bad at all okay um so how do you you know whether you keep dogecoin why should you buy dogecoin of course you want to buy dogecoin because of all these um solid reasons or stable reasons right and then of course hold it and as the price rises um, I'm going to talk about you know how to buy and you know some probability analysis a little bit later on, but maybe I'll do that next week. Today is Sunday, so I'm not going to hold you for long. Um, and that's really what, uh, in a nutshell, we talked about the inflationary design of Dogecoin versus deflationary design of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So I hope that kind of helps, right? So with this, I'm going to uh, go to, let's see. So 0.0475 is right now um, where Doge is back up. It was down to about 0.041, right? So that's not bad at all. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of news, right? Some exciting news that just came out yesterday and today. By the way, if you're not subscribed, so uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button guys appreciate it let's see let me bring that screen up quick there we go here's some news that I don't want to talk about before I talk about the news um, I'm gonna do some technical analysis maybe I'll do it tomorrow not today it's gonna to take a little while so um, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna make myself a note here. We are going to uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run some analysis tomorrow with you guys and then we'll see some indicators. Okay, um, I do this for myself and I'm just gonna do it again So you can kind of take a look at it. Maybe it'll help you or help you not um, You know in the long run when talking about Dogecoin Okay, so uh, we'll take a look at that uh, tomorrow. All right Right now, the price is about a point of four seven six nine. That's where Dogecoin is. Uh, of course, still five percent down from yesterday because it was at point oh five oh right. So just uh, about four or five percent, five point one five percent down from where it was. But it's it's pushing back up, right? It's coming back to that same um, level. All right. Here's another news that I wanted to quickly share before I uh, end this stream. So the master to be a part of its payment plans. We just talked about the design of Bitcoin versus the design of Dogecoin, right? Dogecoin being inflationary design coin, whereas Bitcoin being a Bitcoin. Okay. So Mastercard says too volatile and that kind of Bitcoin is a cap uh, um, you know spikes price down coin is inflationary so it's okay theoretically speaking so MasterCard basically is saying that too volatile for its services so MasterCard is thinking about incorporating crypto payment services, right? That the company announced earlier this month. And Bitcoin, that's the quote that they say, Bitcoin doesn't behave like a payment instrument. It's too volatile and it takes too long to transact. So if you and I went for a cup of coffee and you know I decided to pay with Bitcoin, me more by the time and it takes 10 to actually settle the transaction so that's 
that's how it is it's gonna it cost you a lot more that's what you know he's uh she's saying right so now is mastercard basically looking for a stable coin market that's pretty interesting right so based on our analysis that we just talked about, the inflationary design of Bitcoin, what else? What other coin is out there, guys? Tell me. Let me know. Put it in the comment if you know of other coins, by the way, that are inflationary design. Okay? So see if you can hunt them down. But MasterCard up to crypto payment service will mainly comprise of stable coins, right? Especially after the recent federal regulations in the form of the Stable Act, allowing federal banks to indulge in stablecoin issuance and transactions okay so let me in fact pull this up let's take a look at what this stable act is because federal regulations are they're talking about it they're they're working at it okay so oh, is that a tweet did i open it there we go so the OCC green lights to use of stable coins by federal banks, all right? So the OCC is, by the way, the Office of the Controller of Currency, which is the largest regulator of federal banks in the United States. On Monday, published um, a letter which marks the beginning of a new era for the American banking system, right? So this letter simply says that the banks may incorporate the use of emerging fintech technologies such as independent node verification networks INVNs and stable coins to facilitate transactions so this is some major breaking news as seen right here okay and this is historic now of course all these companies like mastercard visa and i'm sure they're looking for a stable coin and guess what guys take a wild guess bitcoin versus dogecoin which is more stable? Yep, you know the answer, right? It's always Dogecoin so far, okay? Um, so yeah, definitely. Let's go back to our um, news here. So this is super exciting. This kind of ties into the actual inflationary design you know, of, of Dogecoin, the people's currency. So if MasterCard, for example, is looking for a stable coin market, Dogecoin is, I'd say, 90% is the answer right here. It's just a matter of time. Okay, just a matter of time where these companies start to incorporate a stable cryptocurrency. And that's also designed as an inflationary. In other words, the price is not going to be the price of these inflationary designed coins are not going to be volatile, right? Just like they are right now. And of course, remember the the design of Dogecoin is a minute, right, of transaction instead of a 10 minute transaction for Bitcoin. That kind of makes sense. So, you know, you know, you go buy a coffee, you pay in Dogecoin, and about a minute or so, your transaction gets settled, right? That means the other party gets paid, and you're on your way. Whereas if you were to pay something in Bitcoin, you have to wait 10 minutes. They're going to hold you for 10 minutes, right? Until you pay them, until they actually, uh, you know, okay their transaction, verify the transaction, and then, of course, um, you'll be on your way, right? So this is a, a, a news that I wanted to share that MasterCard, for example, is looking at a stable coin market, okay? Um, I'll also cover the Dogecoin Weekly, by the way. Uh, that's the um, the Reddit community. Uh, that's the weekly discussion on 22nd February, right, the, the, the last week or so. I've already covered this, but I didn't really talk too much about this, but maybe I'll, I'll do it uh, tomorrow or sometime later on, okay? Uh, but right now, just focusing on the actual Dogecoin itself and we talked about how this is a people's currency okay uh, let me bring up the full featured chart here and we talked about the reasons why the inflationary design of Dogecoin is better okay uh, it's not a bad thing per se in the long run if this becomes a people's currency if you know it gets accepted more and more which it is by companies, by individuals, and of course, as larger institutions, they accept or they offer Dogecoin, like Mastercard, Visa, or even Amazon. Remember, we're still in you know, there's 
there's still talks, there's still things going on for Amazon. If all of these organizations, um, they start to, you know, dive into a stable currency, which is Dogecoin. That's it. That's, that's Doge to the moon, right? That's exactly what Doge to the moon means, right? All right. So I hope this kind of helps. So yeah, make sure you subscribe guys and, and put some comments so I know um, and hit the like button. Okay. I appreciate your support. This is great. Um, let's see. Give me a moment. I want to check something here before we... There we go. So we're talking about is Dogecoin inflationary, right? Which it is. And Bitcoin being deflationary, right? And we talked about those designs and see how that kind of um, ties in together and what is, what is better, right? So our goal is to understand the importance of Dogecoin, okay? And how it kind of it positioned at a better place as opposed to Bitcoin. Bitcoin having a limited supply. So that's just a summary in a nutshell. So um, the price was down, by the way. So I hope you bought it, right? So good luck to you. And with this, I'm going to end this stream now and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Of course, uh, thanks again for your support, guys. I appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow.